this is show number 102. And very unusual for me, I, I very, very rarely use any kind of props. I think I've used one so far in this series, and that was with a yardstick to give you a graphic idea of how to keep your spine upright. And I, I brought this little prop because we're going to need it. And really what you need to use at home, if you've got a great big soda pop bottle, lemonade bottle, you know, so that's, that's all you need. And you slip it underneath your thigh. We're going to do therapy for your knee. Now, I'm not a doctor. And if you've got some serious knee problems, you post haste check with your doctor before you do anything that I'm suggesting on this show. But a number of years ago, I had really hurt my right knee and I'd lost a lot of mobility and it was, it was a orthoscopic surgery and possibly, uh, certainly no yoga for um, eight to nine months or therapy. So I went therapy and this is part of the therapy and it was fantastic. The objective is to strengthen your quads and the muscles around your knee to help support your knee joint. So you lie on your back with your elbows bent, propping on your elbows. You place the soda pop bottle or whatever, a large round object underneath your thigh. And all you do is straighten out your leg, push the heel away and contract your kneecap and contract your quads. Now you can also do this just sitting on a chair and extending your leg out really push hard and then lower again go up and push tighten the kneecaps now i can't tell you how important this came to be in my life simply because i was angry when at first the doctor recommended physical therapy i thought oh, i do therapy all the time i teach yoga all the time but when they put me on this and then i ended up with weights around my ankle which in that case you need to check with with your physician i'm not going to tell you how many pounds I used or anything along those lines. It took me about a year, but I'm telling you, I got every bit of the strength and rotation back in my knee joint. And it certainly did beat having to go through surgery and the possibility that I would not ever be able to do a lot of these yoga poses. So please be mindful of this. Now change sides. You may have felt your quad getting tired. Um, you need, to, you need to do these every day. Straighten out. The thing is push the heel firmly away from your body. Tighten up your stomach. Feel the quads. Feel the quads. Push firmly and lower. And again, keep stay in a pelvic tilt to protect your back. Straighten out your leg. Push the heel firmly away from your body. Get your hand and feel that muscle, your upper thigh muscle, your quads. You need to get strength around that knee joint and down. Keep that, that whatever it is, a bottle, whatever you're going to use, right underneath your thigh, resting it. Push very, very firmly. Push hard. Tighten up the kneecap and lower. If you've got knees that are, and you know, so many people have hip problems and knee problems, please don't just give in to that. Don't assume that because you're getting old uh, or older, that this is going to happen if you keep working what God gave you, nature gave you these muscles, work them, work them, work them. Uh, it's, it's just amazing at how much you can avoid along those lines. So push, tighten up that knee, tighten up the quads, really push the heel away. Bend and again, push, push, tighten up your kneecap and bend. And one more time, push out, push the heel away, tighten up the kneecap very, very tightly. Keep your stomach tight, keep the lower back on the floor, bend your knee and ease out of your position. All right, now we are going to go into inverted poses. We're going to do a spinal rock. We're going to do a shoulder stand. We're gonna do a modified plow. So again, for those of you with high blood pressure, detached retina, heavy menstrual flow, heavy head colds, sinus congestions, anything, don't do that. But you know what you can do while we're doing this? You can lie flat on your back and extend your legs straight up. Let me show you. If you're not able or should not go into the inverted pose, there's nothing in the world wrong with keeping your body flat on the floor and your legs up. It's great for your lower back, great for the circulation. If you find this to be fatiguing, 
You can scoot up close to a wall or a door or even a piece of furniture and allow your legs to rest on that. You'll still be getting this benefit. So you're not getting left out at all. All right, for the rest of you, we'll start out with a spinal rock. This is going to massage your spine and to get you ready for the shoulder stand. So cross your ankles, hold on to your toes, tighten up your stomach. You tuck your chin into your chest. You roll back, but don't roll back rapidly. Make sure you have plenty of room behind you, no furniture that you'll be running into. And ease back, straighten out your knees, and stretch gently, gently into a plow. Bend your knees, roll up, sit up tall, fold forward, pick up your head, hold your toes, roll back, straighten out your legs, begin to stretch your hamstrings into a plow, bend your knees, roll up, very tall, fold forward at the hip joints where your leg bone connects to the hip bone. Fold forward, don't bend at the waistline. Stomach over your legs, forehead down. Coming up, one more time, roll back. Legs straight, stretch into a plow. And coming back down again. All right, now. We're going to go into the shoulder stand. If you are not able to go into it in a conventional way, roll into it the way we just did because you were already halfway up into the shoulder stand. All right? So coming on down, palms flat on the floor beside your thighs, have your eyes open, stomach tight, a pelvic tilt. Press your waistline into the floor. Bring your legs up, begin to curl, curl, rolling up onto your shoulders. Keep your legs horizontal to the floor. Get your arms closer to each other. Glide your legs up toward the ceiling. The moment you need the support, hook your thumbs onto your pelvic girdle and straighten out your body. Get your heels pushing toward the ceiling. Pull your toes toward your face. To the best of your ability, be very, very vertical. All right, now do not press the neck bones into the floor. Make sure that the weight is on the back of your elbows, not at your neck. And then bend your right knee. Bring your knee into your chest, keeping the sole of the foot pointing to the ceiling. Straighten up your leg. Bring the left knee in. Bring the knee in close to your chest. Push your leg straight up. Again, please keep that weight on your elbows, not on your neck. Bend the right knee into the chest. Push the heels to the ceiling. Pushing up. Bring the left knee down into the chest, pushing up. All right, try to stay very straight. Right knee down, way down, push up. Left knee down, way down, keep pushing and back up again. Bring your legs horizontal to the floor. Lower your arms onto the floor behind your back. Tighten up your stomach. Roll your shoulder blades onto the floor. Come down one vertebra at a time, easing down, easing down. Coming down onto your waistline. Try to get your seat down on the floor. All right, this is very important. 
Keep your lower back flat on the floor as you bring your legs down. If your low back arches up, you need to bend your knees immediately to protect your back. But if you can keep a pelvic tilt, keep it down and keep your legs straight. Now bring your arms back and stretch, pushing the heels away from your body, stretching deeply. Lengthen your waist, open your ribs, stretch through your shoulders, and put your hands on your rib cage and drop both knees to the right. Keep your knees together. Stretch deeply, stretch into the low back. Lift up, pelvic tilt, drop to the left, way over a good counter posture, preparing to go into the fish. Then bring your knees into the chest and squeeze. Lift your waist off, the, off of the floor. A shoulder stand sometimes can be fairly taxing to your back, so this is why. Now make your knee circles. This is why we always do a little bit of low back therapy after we have done the shoulder stand in order to relax those low back muscles. So just make some circles, do some knee squeezes, make every effort to learn to get the lower back off the floor. This is how you'll know you are lengthening the muscles in the lumbar back, which is wonderful for your back health. And then straighten out your legs. If you are able to go into full lotus, ease into full lotus now. If you cannot do full lotus, do half lotus. If you can't do half lotus, cross your ankles, putting your feet on the floor and lowering your knees, all right? So whichever leg position you are able to do, draw your stomach in, lower your knees, hold the back of your thighs, prop up on your elbows, very lightly rest the upper back part of your head on the floor. Don't put much weight on your head at all. Just a good arch to your back. Flatten out your stomach. Lengthen your waist. It's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Knees down. Breathe softly. Open up your chest. And knees down. Straighten out your legs. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. To purchase a copy of Ready, Set, Stretch, Program 012-001, please call 1-800-553-7752 or write to the address on your screen.